and my date of birth is 4th of July 1928. Well, there was no persecution of Jews at that moment. That was to come. And um, I mean, I was, as you, as you know, age of 11. Um, Hitler hadn't started um, persecuting Czech Jews. That came a little bit, little bit later. Um, I mean, I went um, to England just before my 11th birthday. And before I went, you know, apart from, I mean, we knew that we were in danger, that our parents did, otherwise they would never, ever have let us out of their sight. But they felt there was danger. But some of our, some of the people who lived around us, they called my mother, she must be, a wicked stepmother for letting, sending their children you know, away. They did never dreamt that we were in danger. And yet, for instance, next door to me, there were two young boys, and it was their mother who sort of thought uh, our mother was wicked, you know, for sending us away. And this lady, this lady's husband, Soon after we left, was taken off, taken away by the Gestapo, as was my father, by the way. And this woman died, and my mother took the two young boys into her house, looked after them, you know, cared for them, and then they went with her in the end uh, to the staging post, which was the first camp in, uh, in Czechoslovakia, um, which was called Terezin, or Terezinstad, you know, in German. And of course, the boys perished, you know, so she wasn't a wicked stepmother. She saved us, and she tried to save the boys as well. So, so you said that at that, at that time, uh, the other people didn't realize the, the full extent of the danger that was no. approaching. But your parents did. Your parents parents did. Well, actually, the realization came more to my father when the Germans on the 15th of March, on that year, when the soldiers marched into our little town, and the head of them commandeered the best room in our house for his office. And um, you know, I couldn't believe it, and I mean, I was 10 years old, and it was more exciting than frightening at my age. But um, we were sort of called into our best room, and there they were, the commandant and two officers, sitting in our lovely best room, and I could still see his shining boots you know, pressing into a carpet my mother had made. And, and I just found the, feet, the scene very offensive. And um, then the chap, then the commandant said, um, I believe that you and your family speak, can speak German. And my father said, yes, I think so. He said, well, from now on, I want only German spoken in this house. Now my father was tall and proud and he looked the commandant straight in the eye and he said, I am the head of this household and as long as I live, we shall speak Czech and German only in your presence. At that, the commandant stood up and he spat in his father's face. And you know, to this day, I can see the saliva running down his cheek and I vowed there and then I would never ever utter a word of German again and I haven't I haven't to this day but one good thing it did at that moment father who was an optimist realized that we were in danger and 
that something must be done about it. And it did something good to me as well. I love my country and I love my language. And I vowed I would never ever utter a word of German again and that I would never ever forget a word of Czech either. And that's, you know, that's how it was. And it was that episode which um, made my father and mother to try and find a way to send us to safety. And then they came across this mission that Nicky Winton set up. They never met him because Nicky Winton set it up and went to England and worked from England, you know, because he had to find homes and sponsors. And he couldn't do it from Prague. Yeah, but still, uh, you had to leave your country, you had to leave your parents. And do you wish that they should never have left Czechoslovakia, or are you? I was, I was homesick. I mean, I came, you know, I had an older sister, and she came to England as well. But she went to a very posh boarding school in the south of England. And I went in a very poor little school in Liverpool, which was more or less a slum. Not a slum, but you know, just a sort of a little place. But I had lovely foster parents. And the father was very politically active and he realized that there were children in danger. But they had very little money. And they had one daughter, you know, about 13 years old, and he said to her, look, I'd like to bring a Czech child to Britain, to, um, to Britain. But, and because she's in danger, but it would mean that you'd have to share your bath in your bedroom. It would mean that we could only have one little holiday a year. And, you know, we'd have to just sort of do less. Would you be willing to do that? Now, on that question, hang my fate. Because if she had said, said no, no, I don't want to share, I wouldn't be here today. But instead of that, she said, yes, let her come. You know, and it's incredible, I mean, I mean, these sort of things are perhaps, you know, your whole faith that hangs on your little finger, more or less. You know, the same like with my father, who would never let us go if it hadn't been for that commandant spitting into his face. And then, I had another very lucky, lucky incident, because the mother of this girl, she wasn't Jewish, she was, uh, she was uh, Catholic or Protestant, a very, very um, lovely lady. She greeted me with the words, you shall be loved. And you know, those words are the most important words. Any child separated from home or any child in danger can hear. And you know that lady, she died when she was um, 105 years old. And I kept, because I kept in contact with her long after because I, you know, I went back to Prague and then I went back to England. And I remember sitting by her side, holding her hand, and Dorothy, this girl, who was already grey of course, you know, who said, yes, I'll share with you. She said, there's no point in talking to mommy because she's in a coma. And I said, well, I don't mind. Maybe somehow she's, she hears. And as I held her hand, suddenly she opened her eyes. And she said, my little dear, you shall be loved. And she died in my arms. You know, and... Those are unforgettable things. They all are in my book, you know. I probably told you last time that my father gave me a beautiful book. I've got 
have them here. Um, and it was for empty pages. And he asked me to write in, write in it. But first of all, he wrote his thoughts and his fears, you know, in it. And President Benesh even signed it. But I got it here. No, she's ah. That's that's the book. That's the book my father gave me. And it was full of empty pages and I said, What is it? And he said, Well I want you to use it as a diary. So that when you come come to us, we can sit around the table and read the diary together. And I started the first time, first day I was in England, and you can read it here in Czech, Mój Deni, Mój Prvni Krok do Života. And I was only 10 years old, wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> and if you want to look at it, you can. But I covered 16 books through my stay in Britain. And they were the conversations with my parents, my longing for my home. And I grew up through the book. And people like Lady Milena and Joe Schlesinger, we were at school together, you know, we are bonded. And it's wonderful to have an authentic record, 100% authentic. And of course, you know, that led, have I got the other one here? Oh no, this is Nicky Winton's book, written one on him, and um, that's the other one. This is the other one, you lot can have a little look, Thank you. look through it, that's in English of course. Does anybody speak um, Japanese? <laughs> anybody speaks Japanese? It's just come out Mine's in... a bit rusty. <laughs> It's just come out in Japan, yes, it's come out in masses of um, countries and, you know, and it isn't my book, it's my parents' book, because I wrote it for them, and because of that it's very personal and very special, and I'm proud that I did it in their name, in their memory, and that it educates youngsters of today you know, in a very, very positive way. So, you were talking about your parents. Yes. Um, I want to see has a question. But I should, sorry, I, I didn't give you a chance. Could you tell us more about your mother and your relationship with her? Like, what do you remember? I remember my mother's softness, her gentle voice that she always closed her eyes when she, found, when she found kittens in my bed. My father wanted to sort of pour cold water on them when he did that. I loved that. I was passionate about cats. And I felt every cat in our little town, you know, was a stray and that I must look after them. Um, my mother was very beautiful. And... Um, I just have the picture of her, you know, in my mind and in my heart forever. And I still see her because she was the first one who, who discovered that there was some man, she didn't know it was Nicky Winton, but who was trying to get children to safety. And I'll never forget, we were sitting at supper and mother wasn't eating and suddenly she sort of pushed her plate aside and looked at father and said very softly I heard today that both Vera and Eva can go to England and, and father just buried his face in his hands you know and then he looked up and there were tears in his eyes as he said, we'll have to let them go. And, um, you know, as I said, he, 
asked me to keep a diary that so that when I come back to them we can go through it all together and that they'll be all the time with us. And mother, on the last night before I left, she took me to an open window and the night sky was full of stars and she said let the stars of the night and the sun of the day be the messengers of our love and our thoughts and then we'll always stay close. That tells you a lot about my mother, doesn't it? And you know, I never went to bed without looking, looking up in the sky. And when there was a nice, star, nice bright star, I knew it was my mother, you know, thinking of me. And I could write avidly in my diary my thoughts, my hopes, my naughtiness, you know, my yearning for home. And then, you know, in the end, as I said, I lost them all. Father perished on a death march after years of uh, being tortured. And, and mother, though she went through Terezin first, where they were all in Terezin, my grandfather went mad in Terezin, who couldn't bear the indignity. My, um, grandmother who was blind died of shock when the Gestapo came for my aunt you know there, there were there was an awful lot that could have stayed in my heart in bitterness shrouded by bitterness because I lost all my family in such a terrible way I mean my mother I had two two, nep two uh, cousins similar ages to my sister and me and they actually were on that last transport which was supposed to leave Prague the day war broke out and the, and the um, borders were closed. And when I did my um, research for the book on Nicky Winton, I found out that not a single child survived from that biggest transport, you know, including my cousins. And my cousins and my mother, they survived Belsen. I had a little note from mother to say, I am alive, you know, come home. And before anything else happened, she died of typhoid, as did both my cousins. And that's after the liberation. You know, it was very hard, very hard for me to accept, but here I am. I rose above it. I have them still in my heart. And it's a story also of joy because, because I'm giving joy, information and compassion, you know, to other people, the knowledge what can be done how people can help, that we were in danger, that our parents did, otherwise they would never ever have let us out of their sight. They felt there was danger, but some of, our, some of the people who lived around us, they called my mother, she must be a wicked stepmother for sending their children you know, away by the Gestapo, as was my father, by the way, and this woman died, and my mother took the two young boys into her house, looked after them, you know, cared for them, and then they went with her in the end uh, to the staging post, which was the first. And my date of birth is 4th of July, 1928. How did I interpret? Well, there was no persecution of Jews at that moment. That was to come. And um, I mean, I was, as you, as you know, age of 11. Um, Hitler hadn't started um, persecuting 
check juice. That came a little bit, little bit later. Um, I mean, I went um, to England just before my 11th birthday. And before I went, you know, far from, I mean, we knew that they did never dreamt that we were in danger. And yet, for instance, let's go to me. There were two young boys, and it was their mother who sort of thought uh, our mother was wicked, you know, for sending us away. And this lady, this lady's husband, soon after we left, was taken off, taken away 